Order, please. And good afternoon and welcome colleagues, invited guests, members of the general public who are following today's proceedings of the Standing Senate Committee on Legal and Constitutional Affairs. <clears throat> Today we are continuing our consideration of Bill C-16, an act to amend the Canadian Human Rights Act and the Criminal Code. And with us today for the first hour are uh, Gad Saad, Professor and Chair in Evolutionary Behavioral Sciences and Darwinian Consumption at Concordia University. And Taryn Meyer, Ms. Meyer, uh, thank you both for being with us uh, today. And uh, Professor, I believe you're going to lead off. Uh, the floor is yours, sir. Hope you are aware of that. Thank you very much, Mr. Please Chair. Proceed. I have spent 20 plus years working at the nexus of evolutionary psychology and the behavioral sciences, a central feature of which is to explore how evolutionary and biological principles shape our human nature. At the root of this grand objective is the profoundly obvious reality that humans are a sexually reproducing, sexually dimorphic species consist consisting of reproductively viable males and females. This in no way rejects the equally obvious fact that the rich human tapestry includes other personhoods such as intersexed and transgendered individuals. Following a 2014 lecture that I delivered at Wellesley College on the Thought Police, I had a conversation with a student who argued passionately that professors should poll their students at the start of class about their gender identities. While most might have construed her position as outlandish back then, some now consider it too tame. Take the office of BGLTQ student life at Harvard University, who recently distributed a flyer to combat transphobia, where it was stated that one's gender identity and gender expression could change daily, and that, quote, fixed binaries and biological essentialism constitute transphobic misinformation that is tantamount to systemic violence. Was the Wellesley student tr transphobic since she did not potentially consider the daily fluidity of one's gender identity? What about minute to minute changes? Should professors poll their students every 10th minute of every lecture to find out if their gender identities have changed since last asked? Should academics no longer design surveys wherein a participant's biological sex is measured as a binary variable? Would this be transphobic systemic violence since it perpetuates fixed binaries and biological essentialism? Facebook and New York City allow 50 plus and 31 genders respectively as part of one's profile. Should professors develop surveys that recognize all of these genders? Would it be systemically violent to not do so? Should evolutionists no longer explain how sexual selection works, namely the fundamental process by which sex differences evolve? This mechanism recognizes two sexes, and hence it might, quote, disenfranchise those who reject fixed binaries and biological essentialism. Bottom line, foundational tenets of evolution might be construed as legally transgression, as legal trans, sorry, okay might be construed as legal transgressions under Bill C-16. So evolution itself might be a transgression. Ongoing governmental efforts are pushing for a gender neutral society to cater to an extraordinarily small number of non-binary or non-gendered people who feel marginalized at having to provide their biological sex as part of their profiles. This is the tyranny of the minority. 99% of the population should acquiesce to having a default feature of their personhood erased because a few individuals might be inconvenienced by it. The slippery slope of totalitarian lunacy awaits us. Some are now proposing that racial categories constitute, quote, biological essentialism, and instead we should respect racial self-identities. This is known as transracialism, as per Rachel Dolezal, who was born white, but who self-identifies as black. How long before the government tables legislation to combat bigotry against the transracial? What about fat phobia? There are many more Canadians who are overweight than transgendered, and the collective abuse that they experience is sizable. Should the government legislate such hate? The road to hell is indeed paved with good intentions. As someone who escaped religious persecution in Lebanon and whose parents were kidnapped in Beirut, I fully support the protection of all individuals from institutional discrimination. That said, I am weary of the ethos of victimhood 
that has parasitized our culture. The operative motto is not, I think, therefore I am, but I am a victim, therefore I am. I refer to this condition as collective Munchausen, namely the pathological quest for sympathy and empathy by proclaiming victim status using identity politics and intersectionality. People have the right to live as equal citizens under the law. They do not have the right to demand that their identities be coddled and celebrated, lest they might otherwise get offended. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Weyer.